Okay guys, we're going to go ahead and start talking about ionic bonding. This is chapter, um, or section 6.3 in chapter 6. Now, ionic compounds we discussed earlier in the introduction that they are basically just metals and non-metals forming together. Now, specifically, ionic bonds do not form molecules. Okay, remember from the previous uh, video that molecules are specific to covalent compounds and we know that ionic bonds do not form molecules. Now the chemical formula for an ionic compound represents the simplest uh, ratio of the ion types meaning that when we can reduce we, we reduce. So if we had an example of sodium chloride and it was Na2Cl2 we reduce that just to NaCl because the simplest ratio would be a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, we know that ionic compounds are made of anions and cations. Remember that anions are negative, cations are positive. Anions are going to be non-metals, and cations are going to be metals. Okay, so we see that the non-metals are going to take electrons from the cations, which are going to give them, for which are metals. Now, an ionic compound combines so that the positive charges balance the negative charges, and this is a crisscross method. For examples of these, you can look at practice problems, but basically what this means is that in an ionic compound, the compound is going to be neutral. It's not going to have a charge to it. Now, uh, they form what we call a crystalline uh, solid or crystalline lattice, uh, and they form in a very specific shape and a formula for ionic compounds is going to depend on the charges of the ions and how they combine. So in this crisscross method, when we crisscross, the number of positive charges and the number of negative charges will depend and tell us the formula. Now, when they form, what we see is we have an attractive force and we have repulsive forces. And when you see this, what you want to think is that Ionic bonds are like magnets, meaning we have a positive and we have a negative end. Okay. Now, the opposite, so if this is a compound, we know that it's going to attract each other. Each one of these is a separate atom, and they're attracted to each other because one's positive, one's negative. One gives and one takes. Now, the repulsive forces happen when light charges are near each other. Now, when they form and they line up, we see that the distance between the ions create a balance between those forces, meaning the positive and the negatives line up, and this creates a crystal lattice. Okay, and when, it, when they're in a crystal lattice, the ions minimize their potential energy, so they are the most stable, and they combine in a very orderly arrangement. So this orderly arrangement, if we can see the green dots and the purple dots, the green dots are going to be fluorine and they're going to be negative. The purple dots are lithium and it's positive. So we see that around this lithium, and we'll take this one right here, it is surrounded by negatives because obviously the positives are attracted to the negatives. So they line up in a very organized fashion, which is a crystal lattice. Now, when they form and when they line up, they do this in a very specific pattern, and it all depends on the charges of the ions and the size of the ions. Now, when they do this, and the, when they form that lattice, it creates or releases energy. Now, that energy release is called a lattice energy, and it's a lot like bond energy and um, covalent bonding, but we call, when we bond ionically, lattice energy and it's given off, it's released, and it does this because they're trying to become more stable. Now, lattice energy gives off very, very large amounts. Okay, A lot of energy is given off, which makes a very, very strong bond. Okay? And we see that ionic bonds are a lot stronger than covalent bonds, so they give off more energy than covalent bonds do. Now, specifically, ionic versus molecular, or we could think of this as ionic versus covalent, um, ionic bonds and molecular bonds are both strong. They're both becoming stable, but we see that the ionic bond is connected with all of the ions. So all those positive, all those negatives are lining up together 
basically they're holding on to each other a lot better than the covalent because the covalent are easily pulled apart okay? and the attraction between each other is very weak now molecular compounds have because they can't hold on to each other very well they have very low melting points and very low boiling points and it's because of those intermolecular forces now ionic compounds on the other hand have very high melting points and very high boiling points and which makes them very hard and very brittle now ionic compounds are we see that they're very good conductors of electricity in the liquid state and they're very poor conductors in the solid state okay covalent compounds aren't good conductors of electricity at all so ionic is one way covalent is the exact opposite now we're going to talk about polyatomic ions which the basic definition of it is a charge group of covalently bonded atoms we see here in this example and why we bring it up with ionic compounds is that this polyatomic is going to act as one thing and it's going to act as a anion in this case because it's negative and one thing we need to remember is that when we're drawing the Lewis structure for these when it draws when we draw it you just have to realize that we do the opposite the charge to the electrons so see here carbon has four valence electrons nitrogen has five valence electrons and then we add one valence electron because it has a charge we see that with ammonia it's the exact opposite it has a positive charge so we have five valence electrons for nitrogen one for each hydrogen so it's four and then we do the opposite of positive which is subtract one and that's how we get the Lewis structure for that and our last examples are sulfate ions where we see we have we're going to add two so we have um, sulfur which has six and then oxygen which has 24 a total of 30 and then we add two to get 32 and then in hydroxide where we have six for the oxygen one for the hydrogen and we add one for the charge to get a total of eight to get that Lewis structure